Hey what's going on guys Tanmaya for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on sequential circuits logic gates boolean algebra and digital electronics as a whole so in this video tutorial we'll be looking into the sr flip flop also known as sr latch now in the previous video tutorial we saw the concept and basic working of flip flop and the fundamental principle that it works on and how it stores one bit memory so if you have missed that video you can check it out and with that being said let's get started with today's topic so in today's topic as you can see on the screen we have a flip flop which is known as sr flip flop and this sr flip flop is one of the most basic flip flops and we'll see the mechanism and it's working we'll also see the circuit diagram block diagram we'll actually practically see all the different cases and the input and output and we'll also chart down some truth tables now this sr flip flop can be constructed in two ways that is using nor gates and nand gates so we're going to be using both of these so in this entire video tutorial series you'll understand or everything about flip flop so make sure to watch this video till the end of the video tutorial so we'll start off with a little bit of theory so sr flip flop as the circuit says has two inputs s which stands for set and r which stands for reset and it has two outputs that is you can see in this diagram q and q bar and it consists of two nor gates and even nand gates can be used so we're going to see both the circuits so first we'll start off with nor gate construction circuit diagram and then we'll start off with the nand gate and it is connected in a feedback mechanism and feedback arrangement so this is basically the crux of sequential circuits right that the output is given back as a feedback to the input and that's how it is term termed as a sequential circuit okay so let me just first start off with the circuit diagram so we have two inputs you can see s and r over here now these nor gates are arranged such that the output of nor gate 1 so let's say this is nor gate 1 and 2 output of nor gate 1 acts as one of the input of nor gate 2 and output of nor gate 2 acts as one of the input for nor gate 1 also they have their individual inputs s and r so basically this is a two gate nor gate right you can see the output q and q bar which in most cases should be complement to each other and those are the two stable outputs so again it is used to store a one bit memory and it exists in two stable states hence it is a bi-stable device and the two stable states would be high and low and in sr flip-flop the two stable states are called set and reset that is the that's why the name sr so s stands for set and r for reset also known as sr latch because it acts also acts as a latch which means that it can store a memory by when i say latch it means that state which basically stores that memory and holds on to the data and we'll also see that in the cases so starting off let's take a little bit of background info on nor gate so this is the truth table for nor gate you can see only when the both the inputs are zero zero the output is high otherwise all of the outputs are zero for all the combinations of two input nor gate so we've already seen nor and nand which act as a universal gates and i have separate video tutorials on both so if you can check it out in this playlist also i'll drop some cards and you can see a card on the top right corner as well if you want to see in detail so yeah this is the truth table for basic nor gate or two input nor gate which we will use when we actually derive the cases so you can see i have two truth tables as well which we are going to practically solve and fill out okay so now what we'll do is we'll go through four different cases of this sr flip-flop and the reason why we're going to go ahead with four different cases is because we have two inputs and the combinations or the unique combinations would be 2 raised to 2 which is equal to 4 so that is 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 right so each of them we are going to consider as case so for case 1 what we are going to do is we are going to say s is equal to 0 and r is equal to 1 okay so i'm going to say s is equal to 0 and r is equal to 1 for the first case so let's start off with the upper nor gate so when this is 0 if you see the truth table we cannot actually predict the output because one more input is supposed to be coming over here but if you observe for r whose value is high so one of the input of the nor gate is 1 and if you see the truth table of the nor gate if any of the input is high the output is always going to be zero so irrespective or regardless of this input so we don't need this input we just need only one input which is high and once we found out that one of the input of a nor gate is one the output is always going to be zero so this is coming from directly the truth table that's why i have drawn the truth table over here you can see over here so we don't need to know what input is coming into this circuit line we just need this circuit line which is high and we can directly say that the output is going to be zero so here q is equal to zero right this is the output which is going on the q line now this q is fed back as input to the upper nor gate right so it's going over here you can see so this zero is fed over here now s we've assumed already zero and there is one more zero coming in from over here so this is that case so the output is going to be one right so q bar is going to be one now q and q bar are complement to each other which means that this is a stable state and this state is known as reset and the reason why it is called reset is because r is equal to one it's not depending upon the output since r value is one it is known as reset 
Now let's take a look at case number two. Now in this case, we are going to say s is equal to one and r is equal to zero. So s is a one over here and r is zero over here. Okay. Now again, going through the truth table of NOR gate, if any of the input is high, which is the case for the upper NOR gate, the output is always going to be zero. This comes from the truth table, right? So you can directly write zero over here. So Q bar over here is going to be zero. Now this Q bar is fed back as input to the lower NOR gate, right? Over here. So we are getting zero zero. So zero zero is this first case. Which, so the output is going to be one. So Q is going to be one. So S is equal to one. Q is equal to one. This state is known as SET, that is set state. Okay. Let's see case number three. Now here, what we are going to assume is S is equal to zero and R is equal to zero. So I'm assuming S is equal to zero and R is equal to zero. Now in this state, we are not able to actually find out the or guess the second input for both the NOR gates, right? So in this case, what we are going to take is the previous output. That is the state of the previous output, which was this state, set state, right? So Q was one in this case. So I'm going to assume one over here. So zero and one is going to give me zero. So Q bar is going to be zero, and then this zero is again fed back over here, which gives me zero and zero, which is this case, which gives Q is equal to one. So what did we get over here? You can see that when we assumed s equal to zero and zero, the previous output Q equals to one and Q bar equals to zero was supposed to be considered and was considered because it was supposed to be fed back in the NOR gate for a result, right? And then we got the same output, that is Q is equal to one and Q bar equals to zero, which is exactly equal to this, right? So these two cases are equal. So that is why this s equal to zero and r equal to zero is known as latched state, which means that the data does not change or the output does not change even when s equal to zero and r equal to zero. Now s equal to zero and r equal to zero is essentially what we are doing is we are cutting the power off or we are setting both the inputs as zero, but still the output is retained as q equals to one and q bar equal to zero, which was our desired output in the previous state. So it it is also known as latched state or previous state. Okay, sorry for my handwriting, and <laughs> I know it it sucks, but yeah, that's 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 how I write. Anyways, now we are moving to the last state, which is s equals to one and r equals to one. So I'm going to say s equals to one over here and r equals to one. So we know if any of the input is high, the output is always going to be zero. But here you can see that in both cases I've assumed one. So in both cases the output is zero zero. Now this is contradictory because Q and Q bar cannot be same. It has to always be complement to each other. So when s equals to one and r equals to one, there is a contradiction, and that's why this is an unstable state and also known as a race condition. Okay, so this state is always supposed to be avoided. So that's why you do not ever give s equals to one and r equals to one, which gives us an unfavorable output, and it is known as a unstable or race condition. So these are the four different variations. So now we can actually fill out the truth table as well. So the truth table values are zero zero. Zero one 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 zero and one one. Now for zero zero, you can see it is the latch state, right? This was the third case. So whatever previous value we got for Q and Q bar is going to be repeated over here. So I'll say Q n minus one, Q bar n minus one, which means that the previous state output is again repeated. Okay. For s equals to zero and r equals to one, so this is the reset state. That is the first state. The output was zero and one. For one zero, we got one zero, and for one one, it is a race condition. So I'm just going to mark x over here. So this output cannot be predicted, and it is unstable. Now this this is one more truth table, which is basically giving you the next state. So let me just fill it out, and I'll explain. So again, zero 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 one. One zero and one one. So for zero zero, we were getting previous state. Now this is next state Q n plus one. So one minus that would give us Q n, right? So this is the previous state for zero one. That is reset the Q n value. That is the next state of Q. So we are looking at Q over here, not Q n bar or now not Q bar. That that was getting us zero for s one and r zero. We are getting one, and for this we are getting a race condition. So you can also write it as race condition or an x. Or something like unstable or something like that. So this is the basic working of an SR flip flop, which is constructed using NOR gates. So we also have a block diagram which I did not mention earlier. So this is how the block diagram looks like. We just have a square inside which you can write down SR latch, and then you can see the inputs S and R and the output Q bar and Q. Okay. So nothing fancy here. It's just a block diagram. But inside this block diagram, we have this kind of functionality. Okay. So this was SR flip flop using NOR gates. Now let's take a look at SR flip flop using NAND gate. Okay. Again, the same scenario. What we're going to do is we're going to see the circuit diagram. We're going to see the block diagram. We are going to calculate the four different cases in this case also because we have two inputs here also. So we will be having four different cases, right? We have the NAND gate truth table, and then we are going to construct these two. 
to tables. So again, the arrangement is pretty similar. Just instead of NOR gates, we have NAND gates. And in the previous case, we had SR over here, but the output is flipped. That is, we had Q bar over here and Q over here in the previous one. But since you're using NAND gate, the cases are going to be a little different. So for 1, 0, we're going to get Q bar as 1 and not Q as 1, which is exactly opposite to the previous one. So I'll show that when we actually prove the cases. Okay, so let's start off with proving the different cases. And for case 1, what we'll do is we'll take S equals to 0 and R equals to 1. Okay, so we're considering S equals to 0, R equals to 1, right? So now check out the NAND gate truth table. You can see if there is any 0 which is in these three cases, if there is any zero, the output is always one. Only when the input has both ones or all of them are one, the output is zero. So by this, we can easily say that if the input that is one circuit line going in the NAND gate is zero, regardless of what this is, that is zero or one, the output is always going to be one, right? So we can directly assume that. So this means Q is equal to one. Now this Q is again fed back over here to the second NAND gate. So I can assume this one and you can see R is one and one more one is coming in this circuit line. So this is taking two inputs so this is the last case so the q bar output is going to be zero so again since r is equal to one this is known as a reset state so it doesn't depend upon the output it depends upon which of the input is high if s is high it is set state if r is high it is reset state let's see the second condition or second case s equals to one r equals to zero so s is over here one r equals to zero so if one input is zero we can easily calculate the output as one for the lower NAND gate. This goes as a input to the upper NAND gate and one and one, you can see this is case. So the output here is going to be zero. So we got Q bar is equal to one and Q equals to zero. This is set state because S is one. Let's see the third case wherein now we are considering S equals to zero and R equals to zero, just like the case that we considered for NOR, which was giving us the latch state, right? It, it was giving us the previous output. But let's see what happens in this case when we are considering S equals to zero and R equals to zero. So S equals to zero and R equals to zero, right? So S equals to zero, then regardless of what input is coming over here, we can easily assume this as one. And similarly for this also, we can assume this as one. But now you can see again, there is a con contradiction that Q and Q bar both are one, which means that this is an unstable state. So in case of NOR gate, in case of the SR flip-flop with NOR gate, when S was zero and R was zero, it was giving us a latched state. But, but in this case, we are getting the unstable state that was get, that was coming in the NOR gate when we were giving input as one, one. So this is going to be a race condition and this is an unwanted output and we have to prevent this kind of input. So when we are using SR flip-flop using NAND gates, if we give the input as zero, zero, it is going to give us a race condition, which is also known as unstable condition. So moving on to the last state that is S equals to one and R equals to one. So this is, but obvious now this is going to give us a previous state because this is the only one case remaining, right? So let's assume that. So S equals to one and R equals to one again. So now we have to assume the previous state output. So I'm not including third state because it is a race unstable state. For here, you can see Q was zero in the second state. So I'm assuming this as zero. So this zero goes over here. So one and zero, you can see one and zero will give you one. So Q is equal to zero and Q bar is equal to one. So this is the latch state, latch or previous state. Okay. Now this previous state was this state. If the previous state would have been reset, then the same output would have come over here. So this is where the flip-flop acts as a latch and stores that memory bit. So now let's quickly fill out the truth table. It is pretty similar to what we did for the NOR gate. So assume the inputs 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Can okay, I'll fill it out over here also. Now let's see the output for 0, 0. We were getting a race condition. So I'm just going to mark X over here for 0, 1. That is reset state. We are getting Q equals to 1 and Q bar 0. For reset state, we are getting 0, 1. And for 1, 1, we are getting Qn minus 1, Q bar n minus 1, which is the previous state. Again, this state diagram wherein we are, or the state output wherein we are just interested in the next state or the Q, Q value and not the Q bar value. So for 0, 0, we are getting a race condition. So I'll say race slash x or un unstable or something like that. For 0, 1, which is reset, we are getting Q equals to 1. For 1, 0, we have 0. And for 1, 1, now this is for next state that we are calculating. That is the latest state. That is n plus 1. So for 1, 1, we are getting qn, which is equal to qn plus 1 minus 1. Okay, so that's why qn. That is the previous state. So this is SR flip-flop using NAND gate. And you can see the block diagram of the NAND gate. Now you can see the output is just flipped over here. So SR and then you get qn, q bar. 
that's the only difference so this is a basic block diagram but inside this block diagram we have this circuit arrangement we saw the circuit diagram we saw that four different cases and we also constructed all the truth tables so yeah that's it for this video guys i hope you understood sr flip flop using nor as well as nand gate we also saw the circuit diagram we saw the different cases and we also constructed the truth tables so if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video tutorial so i'll talk to you guys in the next video peace